Well, hello. Welcome to Nova Scotia and welcome to my greenhouse in Nova Scotia. And also welcome to my channel, The Optimistic Gardener. My name is Steve Farley. Uh, over the last couple of days, I think I've had quite a few new subscribers, 500 or so. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. And to all you new subscribers, hello, welcome. Where have you been? So today I thought I will spend a bit of time in the greenhouse because it's blowing a, a, a hooli outside, even though, as you can see, it's an absolutely beautiful sunny day, so I'll be, I'll be out there working later on. But when I thought I'd do a bit of filming, I thought about the greenhouse, and as we're in September now, it's time for a bit of a all change in the greenhouse, I think. As you can see behind me, I've got quite a few tomato uh, plants there, quite high. And I oh, actually already got rid of uh, the first row that were here as they were sort of uh, starting to wane in their production. But these are also starting to wane in their production. I've, as you can see at the top there, I've still got, you know, tomatoes coming and I've got lots of flowers coming. And, and my idea was to uh, sort of have these plants to grow a little bit later in the... Uh, in the year, so I could have sort of tomatoes a bit later, but it doesn't seem to have worked out that way. Um, I'm not getting so many pollinators in here, and I know I could be, um, you know, pollinating the tomato flowers themselves, myself rather, you know, just by giving them a little tap and a little sort of vibration. But there comes a point in the year when, you know, it's starting to cool down now, and it cools, cools down quite quickly here in, in Nova Scotia, and the evenings cool down quite quickly so it comes a time when you've got to think you know what else can I grow in the greenhouse that can give me real good sort of production now rather than the tomatoes starting to wane in their sort of yield and what they're doing so I thought I might as well get amongst it cut these tomatoes out and start thinking about what I'm going to grow next over the autumn and throughout the winter, even though it gets absolutely brass monkeys and quite a bit of snow here in Nova Scotia, I can, if I cover the bed, I could sometimes grow some salad crops to be able to pick leaves and things like that. So I can start thinking about getting them into the bed itself. So what have I actually, I thought I'd do a, a bit of a review of what I've been growing uh, in the greenhouse this year as well. So as I said, and as you can see, I had all the tomatoes here. I had lots of cherry tomatoes um, and these black crim, which have still got quite a bit of uh, a few tomatoes on there, so I'm going to leave them uh, to go a little bit longer. They've been absolutely fantastic in here, they have. And San Mazzano in the back, which I'm going to keep going as well, and that they've been very good. And uh, at the back, as you can see, I have cucumbers. Now that was my sort of hotbed that I used. I put a load of uh, horse manure in there around, was it sort of March, April time to create the sort of hotbed effect and I put a little greenhouse on top and that helped to keep my seedlings nice and warm as the sort of uh, manure was breaking down, creating a lot of heat. That helped to keep my seedlings just warm enough to, to keep going early on in the year, which was fantastic. And then I thought to myself, why don't I see if I can um, grow something in that, that, that sort of mix of tomato, uh, horse manure later on throughout the summer. So I planted some cucumbers and what happened to be a, a volunteer, what I thought was a melon. And as you can see, the, uh, the cucumbers, I've been having cucumbers there thick and fast. I've had at least 10 cucumbers off that plant already and there's another sort of three or four there going so I'm going to keep that going at the moment and the uh, the melon actually gave me one nice juicy melon as you can see only the one but I'm, I'm happy with that so uh, so that was a, a quite a good experiment growing those cucumber plants in that fresh manure and that gave them a lot of real good goodness because they're greedy aren't they cucumbers and melons etc so I thought that was a good experiment and what I'm going to do, not right yet, because like I said, I'm going to keep the cucumbers there for the moment. 
Once um, I finish with the cucumbers, I'm going to take all the horse manure out, which is obviously composted down now, and I'm going to use that as a mulch on top of this bed, because this bed, you know, brand new this year, filled it with uh, logs, etc., and they're breaking down, and then horse manure and, and uh, compost on top. So that has shrunk quite a bit, so I want to raise that up and refresh it all. So I'm going to use that sort of spent manure from that hotbed and put that in there, which I think is a, a, a quite a good idea. It means I've got to lug it all the way down to another part of the garden as well. What else have I got? So I had lots of basil, and the basil was done really well. Um, I did have a bit of a, an attack of whitefly early on in the year, which I, um, I, I managed to sort out with a bit of um, organic insecticidal soap and peppers in here. The peppers have done okay. I've not been, um, it got really humid in the summer and I got a bit lazy uh, throughout, throughout the summer and I wasn't watering things as much as I should have, which is why I don't think my yield of tomatoes, some of the tomatoes, hasn't been as good as um, I wanted it to be. But you know, I've had a good amount, but not as good. Like my down my bottom uh, greenhouse, the yield in there, which was easier to water, has been a hell of a lot better in tomatoes. But that's that's an aside. Where else are we going? So basil, lots of basil. Um, and I, you know, I have had a continuous supply of basil all the way through, through the summer, making lots of pesto. And now with the tomatoes coming thick and fast, and these were the last sort of tomatoes I've picked out of the greenhouse here. Some of them not quite ripe, but you can ripen them in a um, in a bag with you know a, a, a banana. I find in a couple of days ripens them up nicely. But all of these nice San Marzano paste tomatoes and basil etc I've been making lovely sauces now and I've actually started canning which might be a video coming soon so and yeah so lots of basil and and more tomatoes over this side here which I've taken most of those tomato plants out now and more basil and what I've replaced already started thinking about you know this next period of growth as you can see, I've already replaced them with some, I found in one of the big box stores, they were selling these um, onion sets, really cheap. Um, it was sort of half price, half of them were sort of knackered, but um, for a dollar, I've got 40 odd um, spring onion, green onion type plants there. So they're growing already nicely. And I'm doing a bit of an experiment as well. I have planted, maybe a bit too late, um, I've planted some potatoes and I'm going to see if I can get them producing some potatoes for me by Christmas for, you know to, to have for my my Christmas dinner so uh, we'll monitor that over the next few months so that is in that sort of side bed there and I've also got the tiny Tim tomatoes which have been um, an absolute superb yielding tomato in here um, really, really, you know, for the size of the, the plant, it's been throwing out tomatoes left, right and centre um, all summer long. So I've been really pleased with them. So I'm going to keep those in uh, for a little bit longer because they've got flowers on them and they seem to be turning over tomatoes really well. Um, the smaller plant is not ne needing as much water, I don't think. So that's a definite good um, tip for next year. And if you see Tiny Tim, um, get some of those seeds. They're fantastic. What else have I got in there? Uh, right, so that's it. I've, you know, I've still got some some basil, the leftovers of some basil there. I'm going to keep that going as long as possible. Um, looking a bit ropey now, but there we are. Another experiment I'm going to try for this autumn is I've got some nice broccoli here, and you know, although this doesn't mind a bit of cold I thought I would try oh, there's a few nasty things uh, look see I, I put these out normally during the day and uh, the old butterflies laying their eggs on there already I'll deal with them later but broccoli 
as it doesn't need a pollinator, you know, we're, we're growing it essentially for the, the pre-flower, I thought I would see how that grows in the greenhouse this sort of autumn, early winter. And then maybe I can even have, I can normally grow the broccoli outside with a bit of cover quite well into sort of December time. But maybe I can grow um, definitely for some broccoli on Christmas day if I have it in the greenhouse. So I'm gonna try that in this main bed towards the back. So I've got some more onions in here and I think I've planted a couple of potatoes as well. But I'm gonna try some of the broccoli <clears throat> and I've also got lots of um, new seedlings for your sort of uh, your lettuce. I've got some mustard, some mizuna, some rocket and some spinach. And I'm gonna plant some of that up in this central and, and side beds as well because they will do especially well in the you know throughout the I can normally keep that going all the way through the winter picking having some fresh leaves all the way through the, the winter even though it's absolutely free you know goes down to minus 15 minus 20 sometimes provide it with a couple of layers of um, cover a couple of layers of polythene etc and that can normally do the trick you know, it won't be growing extensively, but I um, that should be okay. So we can monitor. You can monitor that with me. I'll be I'll be showing you throughout the uh, the autumn winter. See how I'm getting on. But first things first. So that's the sort of review. Yep, all done. Broccoli. What else am I going to try? And I might try some carrots. What do you reckon? Can't do any harm, can it? And you know, that's the good thing about experimenting. You know it. I've got carrots outside, but you know, I've put some in. They may grow, they may not. If they don't, I know now that they won't grow that well. But if they do, then I'll have carrots all the way again into the winter time, even if it's not loads and loads. It's just that nice bit of fresh, your own sort of uh, carrots all the way through the winter that you know that you've grown that's got no chemicals on it. So. A few experiments in, in my new greenhouse this year, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but in the meantime, might as well start cutting down these tomatoes, hadn't I? So I'm just going to pick the last of these ripe ones up the top there. Should really use a ladder, but there you go. This could end in tears. I think that's it. Oh. Right, so this one is going. And I'm just going to cut these off at the base. No dig gardening, I want to try and sort of um, not disturb the soil as much as is possible. The only thing I'm going to be doing is putting soil on top. So I had string keeping these upright, so I need to cut the bottom. It's a sad day when you take your tomato plants down, but there we go. Right, I shall carry on with this and I'll be right back. So there we go. That's a bit clearer. Like I said, I'm going to keep these tomatoes here for a few more weeks just to uh, get these uh, last ripened tomatoes and the one at the back keep them and I've got uh, some tiny tims all the way around the outside here I'm going to keep them 
The rest of it, let's bring this down a bit. The rest of it, I'm going to give it a bit of a, uh, a clean up as well. Like I said, I've got a lot of earth there in the back that I can't use yet because I'm still growing the cucumbers, but that's all going to come out and that's going to um, be put down as a mulch on top of here. And then I'm going to plant some of these broccoli and some carrots. What else did I say? And obviously when the, uh, the salad crops there get a little bit bigger, I'll be planting them up in here and on the side beds as well. You can see how much tomato plants down there, um, how much you've actually got. So that's going to go cut that up nice and, and small and that'll go in the, on the compost heap. Lots of stuff going on the compost heap at the moment, which is absolutely fantastic. Over the winter, it doesn't um, break down as well, obviously, but I've still got a good few months where I can get the compost all cut up nicely uh, and, and then that'll break down quickly with the heat, with all that green stuff, and hopefully, you know, and come springtime, I'll have a nice big amount of compost to spread, whether it be on my veg beds or the flower beds, uh, mixed up with horse manure that I normally get. So, uh, great, you know. Tomato plants are gone now. You know, they've done their job, providing me with lots of tomatoes. Now they're gonna do another fantastic job by providing me with some lovely compost in for ready for next spring. So, a bit of a clean up, I, you, I haven't showed you this bit, you know, the beauty of um, the camera that only sort of sees this area here. I'm a bit scruffy with my pots and things all down here. In fact, I'm gonna show you, and then I'm gonna have a bit of a tidy up, and you can tell me what you think. Have I, have I done a decent job? Um, but I've still got loads of wood. I'm gonna, there's, a, there's wood under here from pallets that I've, I've sort of taken apart that I'm gonna make a, a, a desk with indoors. A desk you say? Yes. You wait till you see that. But let's have a clean up here and you can let me know whether I've done half a decent job or not. So there we go. Job done. A tidy greenhouse. And as my old skipper used to say, a clean ship's a happy ship. Or in this case, a clean greenhouse is a happy greenhouse. It's always good when you do a bit of tidying up actually. You can actually find things and on the tidy or in the tidying up process you find things that you hadn't found for ages. So uh, I found a few of those, which is good. As you can see, all uh, tidy there. All the wood that I had um, sort of stored on that side, I've, I've moved somewhere else. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna be making some sort of desk or something with that over the next few weeks. So I need to move that out of here anyway. All the pots are nice and tidy. My uh, potting up bench there is, is nice and clean now. Now all I've got to do over the next few weeks, while I'm waiting for the cucumbers to finish so I can dump all the earth on here, is start to sort of get ready some of the uh, winterising, you know, because I'm going to put some sort of frame over this with another, with some sheets of polythene, etc., so that I get that extra insulating layer later on in the year. And what I'm going to do is, you can see here on this side bed, I've just put a couple of... Uh, conduits, I think that's a plumbing conduit, just put a nail in one side and then just bent it over and I'll have those sort of uh, conduit all the way along there and last year I did that um, and I had lots of lettuce and uh, kale and stuff all along there with a couple of layers of plastic and, and that lasted all the way through the, the coldest of the, uh, of the winter days. Like I said, it didn't grow much but as soon as it slightly started to warm up and the, you know, the longer days as the spring started, it burst into life and I got some really early greens, which is really good. So this is what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna put some nails in and uh, I'll be sh I'm gonna do a video on how to extend your sort of, uh, your growing season anyway and, and the different sort of jigs and uh, coverings and cloches, etc. you can build to do that. And this is gonna be one of them so I'm gonna get some sort of electrical conduit and have it bent over there with a sort of frame in the middle to keep it up in the middle type thing. And uh, that should provide some good cover, even though obviously I'm in a greenhouse as well. 
But that'll be for later on in the winter, I think. But there we go. Jobs are good. Cleaned out. Cleaned out the uh, the pots and pans, etc. Ready near enough for my autumn growing season in the greenhouse. Job is definitely a good one. Oh, actually, no, it's not. I've just realised a lot of people don't re um, realise that I am on Facebook as the Optimistic Gardener Kitchen Garden Coach, and um, even more on Instagram as the Optimistic Gardener. So if you want to check out, you can uh, obviously check out photographs a bit more rather than these videos. And I post, you know, nearly every day on Instagram. So check me out there in between videos. Now, job's definitely a good one.